Hi, this is Tinko Travels and today we are in the French Alps. The Alps are the world famous mountain range that straddle Austria, Switzerland, Italy, Germany, Slovenia, France. Did I miss any? Don't forget little Liechtenstein. Ah, yes. But while the Anglo Saxon world associates the most with Germanic countries, thanks to the sound of music, many of the Alps' most famous and iconic sites actually sit on the French side of the mountains. With Mont Blanc, Chamonix and some of the most high-end ski resorts in the world, the reality is that the French Alps are probably the best of the bunch. And I'm not just saying that because I'm French. Not even a little bit. Let me show you and then you can make your own mind. Where would you rather be, here or Salford? Mm, Salford. Mm, where would you rather be, here or Birmingham? Birmingham. Where would you rather be, here or Swansea Bay? <laughs> <laughs> Swansea Bay, obviously. To get the best out of the Alps, you need to strap on your walking boots because this is not the kind of place where you can just drive to the best viewpoints. Absolutely not. And with altitude here counted in the thousands of meters, you need to be prepared for a lot of uphill walking. That being said, it's all totally worth it because you simply cannot miss seeing these enormous mountains up close. And scrambling up a valley is a good way to start. Ugly, innit? Gross! The water is crystal clear. I just want to jump in it and bathe in it and drink it and yeah, beautiful. This was our first hike in the region. Surrounded by mountains on all sides, you start in the Cirque du Fer à Cheval, which translates literally as the Circus of the Horseshoe, so called because of all the cliffs around you. It's summer and there's still snow. Oh, yeah, from there, you head toward the bout du monde, which means the end of the world. How is the end of the world in the middle of continental Europe? Well, I'm glad you asked. The path leads to a dead end, surrounded on all sides by cliffs. If you scale the cliffs, you would be in Switzerland. But this path is entirely impassable and the absolute end of France. <laughs> How's the walk? Hard. Not easy. Not easy. This spot is known as Au Bout du Monde because it is the end of the world. Literally, there is nowhere else you can go and France ends here. winter, the towns in this area revolve entirely around winter sports. But in summer, the cable cars and skiing infrastructure serve hikers instead. The Alps are also famous for their lakes, one of which is Lake Geneva. What do you just call it? That's Lake Le Mans. It's Lake Geneva in English. But not in French. Geneva is on the lake, but it certainly does not own the lake, most of which isn't even in Switzerland. <laughs> Hop over a couple of mountains and you'll find Lake Annecy. What is Lake Annecy in French? <laughs> well, like Dancy. Well, at least that's simpler. In France, this region is known as Savoie and Annecy is its biggest city. Which makes it sound like a metropolis, which it's not. Instead, Annecy is a quaint medieval town sitting on the shore of an azure blue lake and surrounded by mountains. Annecy is not an ugly city, as you can see. Uh, it's the capital of the Savoy region and is historically the capital of the region known as Savoy that was a kingdom. Um, and that's where the Counts of Savoy were based. Known as the Pearl of the French Alps, the town sits at the mouth of Le Thieu, which flows directly into the lake. The town hasn't grown much over the years, not because people don't want to live there, but because there simply isn't any space between the lakeshore and the steep mountainsides to grow any further. Back in the 13th century, this was the home of the Counts of Geneva, until, unsurprisingly, they moved to Geneva. 
Then, it became the capital of Savoy, a region that passed back and forth between France, Italy and the Holy Roman Empire. Today, Annecy is a tourist paradise where scores of holidaymakers come in the summer to take to its water beneath its dramatic backdrop. I mean, just look at the colour of that lake. Jeremy? Yes? I've made a decision. Okay. An important decision, and it's something that I think you're going to take very badly. Oh. We're going to move to Anthony. Okay. No, as in like we're actually going to move here, like... Okay. Like, like we're going to like root our, our entire life and change everything and we're just going to live. Okay. Okay. Our second hide was around Lac de Roseland, where we got our first encounter with alpine cows grazing nonchalantly in the fields. Just listen to their bells, which you can hear all over the region. That sound quickly became the soundtrack of our trip. Hike number three! Up in the foothills around Megève, which we got to via a cable car. Cable car, or telecabins as they're known in French, are an absolute godsend when you're walking in places like the Alps. I really think we should make the word telecabin stick in English. It's much better word than cable car. We like a walk. Um, I wouldn't say that we're hikers. Um, but this holiday we have taken to hiking like a duck to water. That being said, the inclines and the hills are just... Oh my god! <laughs> I know, and yeah, this is hike number three, and we're gradually taking it stage by stage, um, where we're kind of going a little bit more, a little bit more each day. So today we'll be at 1,800 meters, and then tomorrow is the big one when we get much, much higher. So, so tomorrow is the day we die. Um, yeah, this might be our last video. I live, you die. Right, well, at least we've got that threat on camera. <laughs> Mejev is one of the world's most famous and renowned ski resorts. The playground of the rich and famous, its streets are lined with designer shops, gourmet restaurants and wealth management banks. So we fit right in. Speaking of renowned resorts, we come to the jewel in Savoie's crown, Chamonix. If there's one place in the French Alps you're likely to have heard of, it's Chamonix. Sitting at the foot of Mont Blanc, the tallest mountain in the Alps and the highest in Western Europe, the town is described as a natural resort, a description that we were a little sniffy about before we went. But it does not take long before you realise that its tagline is absolutely true, because while the town is very pretty, it's what surrounds it that makes it so remarkable. When you arrive, we highly recommend that you buy the Mont Blanc Multipass, which gives you access to all the area's attractions. It is not cheap, but neither are each of the region's tourist sites, and you'll make your money back by visiting only two of them. We bought a two-day pass and started by hopping on the Mont Blanc tramway, which takes you up the slopes of the main mountain itself to a height of 2,372 metres, making it the highest railway in France and the fourth highest in Europe. From its terminus, you get glorious views over a glacier and it also serves as a starting point for many climbers wanting to scale the remaining 2,500 metres of the mountain. Our second excursion from Chamonix was to take a telecabin to the Lac de Chaiserie. Well, I like your use of the word telecabin there. Well done. Thank you very much. There, we embarked on hike four, but bit off more than we could chew. 
Oh yes, now if we have one piece of advice for you about telecabines, it's that you should check what time the final descent down the mountain leaves. Because while we were loving life on our hike, it was only when we got near to the telecabins that we realised we'd missed the last one. Luckily, it was summer and we still had three hours of daylight and we embarked on what was one of the most difficult walks we've ever done, racing against time to beat the sunset. Needless to say, we lived to tell the tale, but there was a moment when we were an hour into our zigzagging path in the dense pine forest where the path was at least 60 degrees. We're not joking here. That we started to wonder if we were going to manage to get to the bottom without some form of misdemeanor. However, we did, and we've learned that descending 1,000 metres is definitely not to be sniffed at. Excursion 3 from Chamonix is a trip to Mare de Glace. Taking a funicular up the mountain, you come to the bottom of one of the last remaining glaciers in the Alps. Famously, the Mare de Glace has become a bit of a poster boy for global warming. A few decades ago, and this valley was completely filled with the vast glacier that had been slowly eroding the rock for centuries. But now, it's a completely different story. As you descend the hundreds of steps from the station into the valley, you see markers that show where the edge of the glacier used to be, tracking its retreat over the decades to the spot it inhabits today. The glacier is still very much present, but it has receded much further up the slope and is nowhere near as tall as it used to be. One of my biggest regrets about our Iceland trip was that we didn't actually go inside a glacier. Well, that's about to change. That's right, because while you're here, you simply must head into the ice cave of the glacier, which is recovered into the ice each year. How cold is that on a scale of 1 to 10? <laughs> the ice is so silky and smooth. How was your murder glass experience? Um, chilly, cold, but five stars. Our final excursion from Chamonix was the big one. The one that everyone talks about. The one that puts the town on the map. Hopping in a telecabin, we'll fly high above the town and head up toward the Aiguille du Midi. An Aiguille is a needle of rock sticking high in the sky. In this case, it's a needle that stands at 3,842 meter high, looking directly onto Mont Blanc. You take two telecabins, the second of which climbs almost vertically up to the Aiguille. It held the title of the world's highest cable car for two decades after it opened in 1955 and still holds the record for the highest vertical cable car in the world. When you arrive at the Agui, you find that the needle has been hollowed out to contain a vast complex of visitor facilities. But you're not there for the facilities, you're there for these remarkable views across the Mont Blanc Massif. On the terraces at Agui de Midi. Currently we're at 3,803 meters high. How do you feel Jeremy? I really can't breathe. I know. <laughs> I'm I kind of, I think I might have like <laughs> altitude sickness. Wow. <laughs> it is, um, yeah, I feel it's very... It's in your chest. Mm, I mean the air feels very <laughs> clean. It also feels very thin. Um, <sighs> it is blazing sunshine. There isn't a, a cloud in the sky. It's glorious. It's nine in the morning. It is currently, how, what was the temperature? Two, one degree. Two, two degree. Bearing in mind this is August right now, and yesterday it was 34 degrees on It'll the ground. Be 32 degrees later. <laughs> it's so gorgeous up here. From the Aiguille, intrepid adventurers can head out onto the ice and explore this remarkable area. This is not for the faint hearted or for the inexperienced, so we were quite happy to just watch them from a distance. You can also catch a telecabin from there that links to the nearby Pointe Elbrona, going from mountain summit to mountain summit and crossing the border into Italy. From there, you can descend by telecabin to the town of Cormayeur, meaning that you can cross the same route as a Mont Blanc tunnel, but by air instead. <laughs> Thank you.
In winter, this entire area is a paradise for skiing and winter sports, but in summer, this is just as remarkable a spot to explore. The dramatic scenery makes other European mountains seem like mere hillocks, because the scale of this whole area is really something to behold. Whether you're a hardened mountain climber or a casual holiday maker, there is something for everyone here. And I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this is one of the most beautiful places in all of Europe. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. But most importantly, subscribe. And follow us on Instagram at Team Quote Travels where you can see all of my amazing photographs. Yes, yes, Jeremy. We are perfectly aware of the fact that all of the photographs are yours. But make sure that you tune in next time to find out where in the world we end up next. Until next time, folks. See ya. Bye. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye. <laughs>